nothing's happening. You might recall from my video about lunch boxes that I showed the um, bed knobs and broomsticks lunch box with this really cool kind of 1970s art <laughs> and the thermos as well. So today we're going to take a look at bed knobs and broomsticks, especially the music, but I think there will be some surprises along the way. Now, as most of you know, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks stars Angela Lansbury as Miss Price, who is an apprentice witch. So, since this is October and we're celebrating Halloween time, it just seems like the most perfect time to be celebrating Bed Knobs and Broomsticks with its theme of spells and black cats and all that. If you've read my D23 article, you know that October is a special month for Bed Knobs and Broomsticks because October 1969 is when Angela Lansbury visited producer Bill Walsh and the Sherman Brothers at the Disney Studios, sent them a very nice handwritten note, which is in the Walt Disney Archives, saying how she really hoped to do the project. And then, in fact, she was signed to star in the film on what date? October 31st, 1969, Halloween itself. The music is written by Richard and Robert Sherman, and the songs were written in the 1960s. First, as sort of a placeholder, as Walt Disney wondered if he was even going to get the rights to Mary Poppins. So the plan was, if it could not be worked out, Mary Poppins would not be produced, and Bed Knobs and Broomsticks would be produced instead. In the early 1960s, many of the songs that we hear in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks were written they were heard by Walt, approved by Walt, and it's not well known that Walt Disney had a great deal of influence and participation in the development of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, even though it wasn't released until 1971, and of course he died in 1966. But because of the early development, he was very much involved with the whole World War II aspect, who the characters were going to be, and certainly the song. As always, one of the most interesting treatments of any Disney film is the Storyteller album, which were issued for most Disney films. And here we have the Bed Knobs and Broomsticks Storyteller. And the Storyteller simply means that it was an LP with, what does it say? A magnificent full color illustrated book and long playing record. So inside we have these illustrations. Since Angela Lansbury is not heard on this record, they tried to make the Miss Price illustration quite different. And it's interesting because as, as this was released in the 1970s, 1971, we have some really fun <laughs> 1970s type artwork to illustrate the story. Now, the songs by the Sherman Brothers on this album were taken from the second cast album, which was the Mike Sam's Singers under the direction of Disneyland Records' own Camerata. Now, here we have a real rarity. This was a promotional album that was released probably in early 1971 to exhibitors and theater owners and marketers and perhaps even radio stations. This was a special preview LP, not for sale. Of this two record set, the first record is the soundtrack recording with Angela Lansbury. And as you can see, it's on the Vista label, Disney's prestige record label. And the second disc is the second cast album. So this was certainly a thrill to receive, and inside we even had a gatefold with all these wonderful photos telling the story of the film, giving uh, the people that this special album, or special album set, I should say, were sent to. It's very interesting because it says release plans. The world premiere of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks will be in the summer of 1971 in London with a release date in the United States expected to be in October of 71. Now, this didn't quite happen. The world premiere 
of bed knobs and broomsticks was in London, but it was in October. And the date that bed knobs and broomsticks was officially premiered is October 7th, 1971. This is an indication that this promotional album was issued early. It goes on to say bed knobs and broomsticks will open in selected theaters around the country for an indefinite run. Bed knobs and broomsticks was initially released in the in the United States and played for the holidays in selected theaters, then opened wider in the spring of 1972, which is perhaps when most people saw it. And that coincided with the Academy Award nominations. And Ben Ups and Broomsticks was nominated for four or five Academy Awards. So that really bolstered its promotion because the Academy Award nominations were widely publicized as it was playing in most theaters for Easter of 1972. And then, of course, the film won an Academy Award for Best Special Effects. It says there will be many merchandising and promotional tie-ins with bed knobs and broomsticks. The Nestle Company is planning a sweepstakes contest based on the bed knobs theme, featuring prize trips to Walt Disney World in Florida. And of course, Walt Disney World opened in October of 1971. On the back, we have some very interesting co copy, the production, the story of the film, and the music. And I really like what it says about the music. The Academy Award-winning team of Richard M. and Robert B. Sherman have composed 10 songs for the film. A 75-piece orchestra comprised of the finest musicians in Hollywood was used in the scoring of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Six weeks of pre-scoring were necessary to record the songs of stars Angela Lansbury and David Tomlinson. The post-scoring of the background music for the production involved an additional two-month period. The entire musical score, including the songs, was recorded in full stereophonic sound. True enough, but oddly, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was not released in stereo. The reasons for this are apparently lost to history. It's very odd. When the original cast soundtrack was officially released, this is what it looked like with this glorious Bob Moore art, or we believe it's by Bob Moore. This key art is just fantastic. Now you'll recall that the Mary Poppins soundtrack album looked like this, as I'm sure you remember from my Mary Poppins video and it had this wonderful gatefold with this terrific synopsis and a little bit of production information here. And of course, this acquainted audiences with the story of Mary Poppins before they even saw it. Now, the soundtrack album for Bed Knobs and Broomsticks is also a gatefold, which is really cool. But unfortunately, it does not have a wonderful synopsis. This is, this is all great with this color. And these photographs are wonderful. And a little bit of production information here. But if ever a film could have benefited from a synopsis, it's this one. Because especially before people knew what this film was, you just say the title, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. And I think the reaction is, what's that about? And... The plot of the movie almost defies a description, so it would have been really wonderful if there had been a, a longer and richer synopsis, but still, this is a terrific original cast soundtrack recording. Now, this key art was also used on the sheet music, and here we have an example. This is the beautiful Briny, and here, as I just said, <laughs> we have the key art. It was the same key art that was used for all the songs from Bed Knobs, including the Academy Award nominated The Age of Not Believing. Of course, The Beautiful Briny has its own interesting history because this song was originally composed for Mary Poppins when a sequence was planned in which Mary Poppins had a magic compass it would take her and the children to different parts of the world, including beneath the sea. So this song was originally composed for that sequence that was not ultimately used in Mary Poppins. But this wonderful song ended up in Bed Knobs and Broomsticks for that wonderful animated sequence under the sea, as one might say. Again, from my Mary Poppins video, you might recall this, the complete musical score 
which has not only songs but lots of photos and behind the scenes information. And wonderfully, uh, the complete musical score of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was also issued in this same format. So that was a treat, and especially to read the behind the scenes information. So Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was not only a very spectacular film, a very splashy musical fantasy with all these great songs, it was a very expensive film. In fact, it was the most expensive film Disney had ever produced up until that time. So there was a lot of promotion and a lot of effort put into creating interest in the film. And one of the ways that was done, of course, was to have sneak previews. So this very elaborate invitation was created, and this was used all over the country to invite exhibitors and theater owners again and marketers to special previews of the film. The art on these invitations was taken directly from the film, from the title sequence, which was created by David Jonas. He based his title treatment on the famous Bayou Tapestry. And that very famous historical piece tells the story of the Norman Conquest in 1066. Then this opens up into this whole glorious fold out. I'm going to try to show it to you here. And we can see how elaborate this is. And again, using the art from the title sequence of the film. <laughs> and it's absolutely great. This was for a screening in Atlanta, Georgia, and was held on Tuesday, May 25th. Now remember, the film did not debut until October. So this was really getting theater owners excited about the spectacular new Disney film. And also gives us an indication of when the film was completed in May. And to conclude our video for this October celebration of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, I have again the original cast soundtrack recording. Now I know you're saying, didn't you already show that? Yes, I did. But I wanted to show you this particular copy because the Sherman brothers themselves autographed this for me. So it's a very priceless keepsake of mine. I wrote a very extensive article that was published in the Disney Historical Journal, Persistence of Vision, a very extensive history of the whole production of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. And Richard and Robert gave very generously of their time, spending hours with me where we talked about all aspects of this film and every single song. On that day, I asked them to autograph my copy, and they did. And it says, to Jim, with our friendship and admiration, Richard M. Sherman and Robert B. Sherman. So you can see why I treasure this. When I did a presentation about this film at the D23 event, celebrating Bed Knobs and Broomsticks on the Disney lot, I brought this with me and had my picture taken outside the studio theater. Because, of course, at the Disney Studios right here in Burbank, it's where it all happened. The entire film was shot there on the on Soundstage 2. And since the Sherman Brothers songs are obviously such a great part of this wonderful film, it really represents the best of Bed Knobs and Broomsticks right here. So thank you for joining me for this very special October celebration of this film that's all about a uh, witch and seems very appropriate for Halloween time. So I hope you'll join me next time when our guests will be Oliver J. Dragon, Charlie Horse, Mr. Moose, and Lou Zealand, who will be here to lead a discussion on puppets. Let's give them a hand. See you then.